Hi, and welcome to the program. IDP resettlement has seen good progress in the month of October. Although there is still some contention over the total number of returnees, donor agencies have acknowledged an improvement in the overall humanitarian situation in the north of Sri Lanka. Still, NGO estimates tell us that thousands remain in the camps living under difficult conditions. In terms of information, it's the same old story. The media still has no access to the camps and INGO representatives are reluctant to provide the missing details. Our first story this week reminds us of the need to keep pushing for more information, access and transparency in dealings with the IDPs and also the need to continue to call for their speedy return. Waiting to go back home. Another batch of IDPs from Vaunia await their departure from the camp that has been home to them for the past six months. The government says that 119,687 people have already left, 91,999 for resettlement and 19,903 for release. The majority of the IDPs have been resettled in their original homes in the districts of Jaffna, Vaunia, Mana, Mulathiu, Trincavili, Batiklo and Ampara. Demining activities are also being carried out in the north to make resettlement possible and this process will be speeded up further with the use of recently arrived equipment facilitated by the UNHCR. But in spite of the improving situation, there are still IDPs languishing in camps in Manic Farm located in areas known as zones. The government says that there are little over 150,000 people remaining. Other estimates put the number at 190,000. They survived the traumatic escape from the Vanni in the last stages of the war and reached the relative safety of shelters provided by the government, but continue to endure difficult conditions due to congestion and even bad weather. Their resettlement must remain a priority on the government's post-conflict resettlement agenda. While there are some positive developments to go by, the government has still come under criticism from various quarters, both from within and outside its ranks for not having handled the resettlement in a more efficient manner within the 180 days as promised. We spoke to Suresh Premachandran, an MP of the Tamil National Alliance, to find out his views on the present state of affairs concerning displaced civilians in the north. Is the TNA satisfied with what the Sri Lankan government is doing for the displaced Tamil people at this point of time? Yeah, not at all. Actually, from the beginning, we are saying that the government doesn't have any rights to keep these people like this in the camps. Because these people having their own land and their own houses, these people were taken from those areas and now they have actually almost like a concentration camp, they are keeping them. So we told them, let them go back to their own places. Government is giving two excuses. One is the demining, the other one is screening the people, right? But, if you, but there are a lot of pressure from outside, from the United Nations, from European Union, from the United States, uh, India, from various countries, the Sri Lankan government has given uh, an undertaking saying the United Nations and the European Union and India, within 180 days, 80% 80 of the people will be resettled. But that doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. But of course, there are so much pressure. We also met the president last month, September 7th. We met him. We also told him about the situation in the camps and uh, they must be resettled before the monsoon and things like that. So now the government knew very well that they can't keep 280,000 people in the camps because if the monsoon comes, definitely there will be flat. People can't stay there, live there. There will be, you know, uh, so much of, um, how do I say, uh, you know, the health problem will create it. Not only that, there will be there will be a uh, agitation or there will be struggle against the army also because they are the people who are safeguarding the camp because there will be a clash between the army and the public if they, if they are going to keep the India people. The resettlement process has so far been handled entirely by the government 
has the TNA at any point wanted to be involved in this process and what has been the response of the government? Yes, we are 22 people elected by those people and we are representing them. Even any sort of development work, any sort of uh, uh, resettlement work or reconstruction work, the government never consult with the TNA. You know, we are having 22 members in parliament. But we told the government, we told the government, if you are doing the uh, resettlement and the reconstruction work properly, definitely we are prepared to support you. We are prepared to give you all the help, right? But actually they never consult with us. They themselves doing everything.